should be able to see a slideshow now. Yes. Great. Then um, this is the second part of uh, what I will talk about today. It's called Maxdesk script. And this is a Python API that I've been writing while working at the ESS. It's funded by Panosk and part of the Panosk work package five that deals with simulations. And the, the reason for designing this is to be able to offer Maxdesk simulations at, as an online service through Python, um, which is much simpler to do than having some remote desktop. And it's quite easy to install this. It's, a, it's an open source project, so you can find it on GitHub and you just install Maxdas as you normally would and then uh, install Maxdas script through pip uh, on the, the Python that you're using. And here I can actually do a live demo of, of Maxdas script, building up a simple instrument and walking you through how it's done. So first we import the package and we have a few different subparts, the instrument, the functions and the plotter that we will use when we get there. The very first time you use the package, you need to configure it just to find your local Maxdas installation, both to find the binary and the, uh, the path of all the components. I don't need to do that, but I'll just do that one more time. Then the most important class is the Maxdas instrument, and that is used to create instrument objects. Here I just create one that's called demo and set myself as the author. And now I have this instrument object. The instrument object will actually know about all the Maxdas components you have installed on your system. So we can ask it for help. Here, for example, I ask it uh, with the show components method, what's available. We have these categories and we can see what's in sources, for example. And this gives us an overview. We can then ask for component help on, for example, the, the moderator and get some information on the parameters used to describe a moderator what is the required parameters and so on. And this helps me a lot when writing new instruments that I can get some overview of the components, remember what they're called and, and uh, find all the parameters. And then the important bit, of course, max test simulations are built from uh, a sequence of components. And so there's an add component method and we just run this cell. We're adding a component object that's called uh, source and is of the component type source divergence. We then ask the instrument to print out what components it has. And luckily it has a source just like that. We get a source object returned and we can print that. And it actually just complains a lot because we haven't set any of the parameters and we wouldn't be able to run a simulation yet because there are some required parameters that are not specified. And you just set these parameters as you would an attribute on such an object. So you can just set the width, height and the focus as Python attributes. And when we print the source again, doesn't complain anymore, but shows you the unit and everything of, uh, of these parameters. It's even um, filled in some protection so that if I try to set a parameter that doesn't exist, I will get a nice error saying, there's no such parameter called wrong in a, com in a source divergence component. And I will even get some help. I can get auto completion on the parameters. So it, it's nice that it knows what's going on and it will really cut down on the number of mistakes that I happen to make while writing these kinds of things. 
Now we can use the, the show parameters method on the source to really get a full overview of, of this um, little component object. And we can see the green values we have already entered, but the blue ones, they are default values. And both the, the energy and wavelength distribution has some default values, but they're zero. So they're not really meaningful. And we need to adjust those next. I would like to use some input parameters for this instrument. For example, selecting the wavelength or the, the order from the monochromator. To do that, we use the add parameter method on the instrument with wavelength, for example, as a parameter name. And you can give it a, a nice default value and a comment to help a future user. The, the show parameters method on the instrument will give the, an overview of the, the current parameters uh, on this instrument. And now we can just use uh, these parameters in strings to set attributes of our source. So we can set the mean wavelength and the wavelength spread. And we can even do uh, simple math inside such a string. And updating our source object with that, we now see we can set the wavelength and then we will get 1% uh, of that wavelength as uh, the wavelength spread. Very nice. Of course, we have to specify the position of, of our max test components. And so you can do that as keyword arguments when you define it. Here we add a guide gravity component with the name guide located one meter after the source. And we can set some basic parameters, print it and see what's going on. And sure enough, we see that it's here one meter after the source. Now there's also a, a set at method uh, on the component object. And you can also set it relative to a, a string description of the name of the component. You don't have to use the component object as I did up here. Let's try to set it two meters away instead. And I can print it again. And it now is two meters from the source. Another nice feature of MaxDAS is that you can write calculations directly into your instrument file. And that's possible uh, in the Python version as well. You can add declare variables with the, the add declare method. And you can add lines of C code to the initialize section with append initialize. Although you can also do all of this in Python and just insert the values directly, but it's still possible to do in the instrument as you've shown. Here we also calculate the rotation of a monochromator and print it in the output of the simulation. Now to insert such a monochromator, we again use add component, set up the attributes and the position with the variables that we used just calculated. And we get a nice little piece of code describing a monochromator. We also need to set up a new beam direction, um, basically two theta instead of just theta to have a nice arm uh, after which to place our sample. And that's the last step in our simulation, setting up a sample here. We set it 1.1 meter after our arm, give it some uh, a list of reflections. This is NASCALF uh, calibration sample. And because that needs to be a string in MaxDAS, we need to put it in double quotation marks in Python. That's a little inconvenient, but if you want this to show up in MaxDAS, we need to put all of this into a MaxDAS script. We can see only the single quote or the, the double quote version inside of the single quotes show up in the printed component. Now we just need to record the 
data that comes out of this simulation and we put up a cylindrical banana monitor and a PSD for the transmission through the sample. Now, before we run the simulation, we just check that everything is reasonable. By printing the components again, we get a nice little overview of what's contained in our instrument object. And we have the source, guide, monochromator, sample, and we can see all their positions. We do show parameters and see we have our wavelength and order as we set up. Now it's time to run the simulation. And I'll just start the number crunching. This has the, the run full instrument method and then keywords to set different kinds of, uh, of settings. Here we set the in count and the name of the data folder. We ask it to just increment the folder name each time instead of complaining. And we can set parameters for the instrument as a dictionary. Um, a normal Python dictionary. And in this case, it was just a few seconds of computation time. Now it returns a data object. And the data object is just a list of MaxDAS data objects that can be printed and, and give us some idea about the intensity. And we can also use the, the plotter part of MaxDAS script to get uh, an output in uh, our notebook or from the Python script. And here we see the two theta plot of and powder lines with very coarse resolution. And we see the transmission image as expected. We can even uh, adjust how things are plotted. And that is actually that kind of plot preference is kept with the data. So we use uh, name plot options to modify that data. And here we set uh, a small range from two theta of 90 degrees to 150 degrees on the banana monitor. And we choose a logarithmic axis uh, and a certain number of orders of magnitude on the transmission data. But of course, to show the data like that, it has been loaded and is available uh, as NumPy arrays um, behind the scenes. And if you want, you can get that. You can grab the banana detector from the data. Now that's this MaxDAS data, data type. But in the intensity, we just have a nice NumPy array. And you can grab that data and plot it however you want or do calculations with it or something like that with the matplotlib, for example. So it's a nice way to get your data into Python. You can also uh, view the instrument in the browser. Um, it needs to compile it again and everything. So it takes a little while. But here we get uh, the, the WebGL version, where we can see we have a source down here and the start of our guide. And then we have the monochromator reflecting a few of the incoming neutrons or scattering them. Then we have the sample and the banana detector and our transmission monitor. Okay, so I did this presentation as fast as I could to give us time to maybe play with this uh, through a browser environment. But I hope that it still provided you with a nice idea of what you can do with Maxter script directly from a, a Python environment. And now we then have this chance of using uh, penlearning.org, which was also set up with Panask and you can get a, a user if you just write me on um, in the in the chat i will send you uh, user credentials and you can follow this guide to log in but before we really start any of that let me hear if you have any questions about maxdescript